Thanks for joining everybody. Uh, a little bit about me and Chris. If you can make me presenter, that would be great. <clears throat> I'll try and take you through about, oh, hopefully it's about 10 or 12 minutes of the overview of sort of how we partnered together, why we partnered together, and then we'll uh, quickly get into a demonstration of the two products that are both add-ins, <clears throat> and they are uh, exclusive to Oracle. They are exclusive to Oracle Service Cloud today, and they are they will be exclusive to Oracle Service Cloud, uh, both .NET and uh, web or uh, you know the browser UI, as well as uh, both of these products are available for use within Engagement Cloud and Sales Cloud going into 2017. So we just got back. I apologize for my voice. <clears throat> I totally blame uh, Open World. So we actually had two booths at, at uh, Open World last week in San Francisco, one showing off the new browser-based UI and Engagement Cloud and Sales Cloud, and one focused on uh, Oracle Service Cloud opportunities today. Uh, my background is in operations, so I ran consumer sales and service operations for Verizon in the, north, in the Northwest and the Northeast, and then I ran a company called AFNI, which was that we grew that to about 5,000 uh, employees, and we were a contact center customer service outsourcer for tier one clients across telecom, media, entertainment, insurance. So much more of an operations background. How do you how do you deliver a personalized interaction at scale? That's always sort of been what, what my focus was, and then of course, how do you do that profitably? And uh, we found a really nice <coughs> fit with our two software add-ins. Um, that work alongside Oracle to, quite frankly, help with a couple of gaps that either are implied or, or, or explicit when you're out there selling. The two reasons really we exist um, uh, are this. The, the, the first thing is we want to take anything we should know about that customer, who they are and what they're trying to accomplish. And, You'll see Jarek actually will, will show that coming through the voice channel, right, which is the only channel that Oracle doesn't own today. But we'll show how our PopFlow product can take anything around that IVR data or how a customer hits menus to get into a contact center and, and never ask that same question again of the customer. Let's automatically take that data and drive to the appropriate workspace. Let's drive even to the best answer or best offer uh, using the knowledge products. Let's drive to the right workspace. Let's drive to the right product page. Let's look for open incidents. All sorts of really cool things that we can do with that data. And so the first reason we exist is to help your customers, your prospects, understand that they can deliver a repeat-free experience regardless of the channel that the customer uh, communicates with their brand on. Again, 50% of all contact center volume is still voice. Now, most of it starts on the web, but then it will go to maybe a chat session or email or whatever, and a lot of it still ends up in voice. And, of course, based on the nature of, of the business, it's going to be a higher percentage or, or lower percentage. But across all inbound customer contact, 50% of all volume is still voice. So it's a huge piece. And when you talk about omni-channel or multi-channel or no wrong door service, all those types of themes, uh, we're really there just to make sure that when you are, are espousing and you're trying to show the value, the, all the value that can be had when somebody picks Oracle Service Cloud versus the alternatives, uh, whether they be on the CRM side or the ACD side, the Genesis, the Cisco, the advisor of the world that are trying to sell their own version of, a, of an omni-channel desktop, uh, we just need to make sure that you know that it's possible to actually outflank them and, and quite frankly, you have a better combined elegant solution to, to deliver uh, the fastest path to the best solution. Uh, so we're going to show you Poplo. We're also going to show you Harmony. And Harmony is our product that allows a customer to say yes to Oracle channels, social, email, chat, you name it. <clears throat> Those are better channels than, quite frankly, the telecom providers, the ACD, the switch providers have because you, you ha Oracle has the customer data, the customer context. Oracle has knowledge. Oracle has you know, sort of all these things that help you understand or help the agent, if it ever gets to a live agent assisted interaction, you start from a, a farther point in the process about knowing that customer, knowing what their history with you is, and especially if you've got knowledge integrated or some deflection self-service, 
those channels are superior to the to the Cisco, the Genesis, the Avaya of the world, the interactives of the world. The and and why Oracle doesn't own or hasn't been able to sell more service cloud, especially to uh, the licensing for all of the voice agents, for the phone call agents in these contact centers, is because when you sold traditionally the email or chat channel, you've forced that customer to manage those groups in a siloed fashion differently. I've got an email group over here. I've got to staff that group. I've got to run you know, my forecast for that group. I've got to look at separate reports from Oracle about how productive that group was or wasn't. And then I've got telecom over here, which is managed out of my uh, all the reports from my ACD, my automatic call distributor, which feed up to my workforce management system. I've got different routing rules about who should take the next interaction. So all those things happen to have in, happen to be in two places. Harmony sits between the switch, the ACD, and Oracle Service Cloud and allows the customer basically to manage all of those interactions, see them all from one place. I'll let Jarrett get into how that works uh, in, a, in a few minutes here, and allows the agent to actually handle any interaction regardless of the channel from within the Oracle Service Cloud workspace. And this works across all the major enterprise uh, ACD vendors today. So I don't have to toggle in and out or log in and log out of chat to go take voice calls. Harmony manages all that and says, hey, you know what, Mike's on a voice call, don't send him an Oracle chat. Or I'm on two, I've got two or three Oracle chats going on, don't send a voice call. Really, really cool stuff. <clears throat> At the end of the day, and again, we'll send this deck out, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time going through all of the, the talking points, but really what, regardless of who the prospect is you're working with, their customers want to feel four things on every interaction. They want to feel like you know, the brand knows them, that they know that the agent they're talking to knows their stuff, uh, and they certainly want to feel like they're going to be respectful of them and their time, right? So never repeat, never start over, don't ask me the same, you know, questions twice, that sort of thing. And then, of course, keep you informed. So there's some really cool automations and workflows that we can kick off as, you know, when an interaction arrives to drive, you know, some, some proactive communication. One of the big themes that we work with with uh, Oracle in pursuits, both enterprise, mid-market, and now with Engagement Cloud, we're going to do a lot more on the SMB side next year, is this uh, realization of this, of this the growing body of data. It's about four or five years old, corporate executive board in Harvard Business. <clears throat> Where it actually shows being easy to do business with has a much higher correlation to customer loyalty and propensity to spend more with your brand than net promoter score and certainly the old CSAC customer SAT score. So everything that we do, everything that we demo together, the reason why we show never repeat, never start over so much is because F, the perception of the customer that that was easy or that you didn't waste my time is actually the most critical CX uh, data point out there. Again, not going to go through all this, but there's a great Forrester paper that came out last year, contact centers must go digital or die. Again, voice is a piece of that, so you've got to cover voice. Um, but when we get into really lengthy reviews with customers, um, there are six keys to this, and the Oracle Service Cloud Plus, uh, you know, our two add-ins cover these more beautifully than, than anybody else out there. Again, the ACD providers as well as the other CRM options out there like Salesforce Dynamics, you name it. You don't have to be perfect at delivering omni-channel service, right? My, if, I need, if I want to use chat agents, to handle some overflow phone calls because I'm getting killed on the phone and people are backing up and they're waiting 15 minutes, I should do that because a customer, again, doesn't necessarily care if Mike is the best phone agent, you know, but I do care, the customer does care if I know the answer to their question. It's about effort, not being perfect. So again, it's not about, about making every agent a super agent and being able to handle, you know, every channel. But it certainly is about operational flexibility to move people between chat, email, social, and phone as volume dictates based on skills around what they are able to solve, not necessarily skills around you know, channel. That matters more. And all the, all the right things go the right direction. Not going to get into this, but just suffice to say, everybody that matters, from the people that do the telecom piece, the workforce management, to the customers, to the agents, and to the people that manage IT, um, uh, there's a really, really strong story in this for all four. What you're going to see here in about two minutes from Jarek as he walks you through both solutions, the Harmony solution, again, brings those channels, 
the voice channel. It makes it native, if you will, to Oracle Service Cloud, and he can uh, expound upon that. Um, and again, this, this idea of managing all of your communications from the same workspace where you find the answers to the questions and where you perform your work. Most contact centers will never get to a unified desktop, right, where they can do everything from one workspace. I will say this, Oracle, because it's got the most complete CRM solution, especially in a servicing world, has, gives you the best shot at it. Um, there's a great report uh, out, I think it's 2014 data, came out in 2015, Contact Babel. And they looked across, you know, again, all inbound contact centers in North America. And the average handle time on an inbound interaction is six minutes and one second. Six minutes and one second. The average number of applications used by the rep during each interaction on average is 3.9. When there was a use case that allowed or a brand that was able to figure out how to put, you know, allow a rep to find, do, and communicate from a single pane of glass, average channel time dropped to four minutes, 33 seconds. That's the theoretical opportunity is 90 seconds. And I'll, we'll shoot you a partial slide of our, of our joint customers. Again, we can't have a customer unless they have Oracle Service Cloud already. So we can't win until you win. And I'll, sh I'll show you a partial list of those, of those joint clients. But every one of those is looking at 30 seconds, 47 seconds, a minute in handle time reduction, which pays for service cloud, it pays for our add-ins, and it and on the CX side, it, it it delivers this never repeat, never start over experience. So there's a ton of opportunity there in terms of the ROI equation that we go to market with together, and then this universal composite queue. All these channels, we expose the Oracle interactions to the phone switch, so from that ACD, the workforce management system, and all the reporting that a contact center is used to using is all from the same place and you can even apply the routing logic that has been already developed and especially the larger the enterprise, the larger the contact center I guess I should say, uh, they've typically spent hundreds of thousands if not mi millions or tens of millions creating extensive routing logic about how to route the customer to the right agent. You can leverage those across all of your Oracle interactions as well. So that's the second sort of component. If you're not familiar with how people do computer telephony integration today, how do I get this Avaya switch, this Cisco switch, this Genesis switch, this interactive switch, this five? If, if you're not familiar with how you get that data from the telephony or the transport piece into Service Cloud or a CRM, this is what it looks like. It's six to ten people. You typically have highly specialized uh, communications people involved. It's anywhere from $5,000 to $50,000, and it's a professional service coding effort. And then if anything changes on the telephony side, it breaks. So you'll see a lot of times when you walk into a contact center where they get screen pop, quote unquote, but it's only happening 30 or 40% of the time. That's because a lot of changes happen, and therefore it's gotten degraded over time. We're going to show you a total rethink on how you build that bridge between your telephony platform and your communication platform and Oracle Service Cloud, and it, we actually put it in the hands of the Oracle Service Cloud Administrator. And there's some really cool stuff we can do, not only by listening to the data that we should know about identity and intent, but if that data to drive that workspace or accelerate that experience for the agent to find the right answer isn't already in Service Cloud, Popflow has the ability to actually go out to third-party systems. We'll leverage the Siebel Accelerator, grab it from Siebel. We can also show you how we can actually reach out behind the scenes. Maybe they've got, maybe they know Mike Garner in their Salesforce automation tool, and maybe that Salesforce, well, when a call comes in and my call center and my service center is running Oracle Service Cloud, PopFlow can actually go out and make a call to Salesforce, bring the data that's necessary for the interaction into Service Cloud, automatically populate it, and drive you to the right screen. Some really, really cool stuff about how we can take their data while we take their customers. Um, Again, partial list of customers, but some of the biggest brands in the world are already partnering with you and us to just, quite frankly, get it done better from an OpEx and a CX perspective. Um, all of the typical resellers that resell and do the SI work, the systems implementation work for you, also resell both of our products. 
we are not competitors to them. We we actually have our products uh, resold alongside yours. Um, only work with you. Yada yada yada. There's a bunch of words on these. I'm not going to go through it all. Um, I think I think we're good. There's some data around who you can contact. Thomas Turnell at OpenMethods.com or Thomas at OpenMethods.com. He's he's been at Open to Methods for <clears throat> gosh, I know going on six years now out of Denver. Uh, so he's a great contact. Um, there's my information, and then of course OpenMethods.com/oracle. Your Oracle email will let you get in and, and get and you have access to all the collateral we have. With that, I think I'll just go ahead. I'll take any questions you have on the overall message, and we'll get you over to uh, Jarek to actually show you the technology. Anything for me before I turn it over to Jarek? All right. This is the easiest presentation all day. <laughs> all right, Jarek, I'm making you presenter. All right, great. Let me just uh, switch on my screen here. And everyone should be looking at a, a desktop of uh, Oracle Service Cloud. Looks good. All right. Yep, looks good. Yeah. So now what I'm going to do is basically all these great things that Mike just talked about, I'm just going to kind of show them in a live environment. Um, so this is kind of the standard demo that we do to try and show the key points. Um, and then if you have any questions about specific use cases, we can uh, kind of look at those individually. But uh, first of all, uh, like Mike said, we have two products. Uh, they're both uh, add-ins. So um, you know, we uh, have a few custom workspaces and reports. And then the add-ins are loaded up into the add-ins folder and assigned to a profile. Um, I'm going to talk about two of them. Probably first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about Harmony. Uh, it fits into the uh, into the dockable you know space just like uh, any other any other tool view. Uh, and this is what actually interfaces with the ACB. And I'm going to say ACB and switch kind of interchangeably, but this is any call center um, home system that does routing, skill based routing to agents. So um, it comes in, it goes to a pool, it makes a routing decision, and uh, sends the interaction to the agent. I'm going to log in here. Um, I'm kind of doing a secondary login to the switch, but this can be all single sign on if you want it to be. A lot of different ways you can handle that. Um, I actually have a Genesis switch in the background here, but like Mike said, this could be any switch um, out there in the market. We work with uh, all the major players, um, and we represent the capabilities of each switch in the same user interface for the agents. Um, so this is important if um, you have a call center that they have a bio switch on a day-to-day -day basis, and they have 20 agents, but maybe they're a, a retail, so they need to ramp up, and they bring on a BPO. Um, that BPO may have a different kind of switch. The great thing is, is the agent's view of Oracle CX is the same no matter what switch is behind it. Um, we just talk to those switches on their on their native language. So it's, it's really kind of a cool thing. What you see here is you have an agent logged in, Jarek Davis. He's logged in. And he's logged into this Genesis channel. 32510 is my, uh, my extension. Um, and I manage all of my phone calls. I talk to Genesis. Hey, I'm ready. I'm not ready. I'm available. You know, maybe I've gone to lunch, um, and all of this goes back to the typical ACD um, experience that the agents are used to. The new thing here is you see we've got an, uh, an email and a chat channel available. What we're doing is we're letting the ACD know, um, hey, we've got these two channels that are in Service Cloud, and I want you to go ahead and route uh, and report on those for me as well. Um, so I'm going to go ready on email and go ready on chat. Uh, and as those interactions come into Oracle Service Cloud using APIs, we pick up that interaction and we take all the metadata about it and hand it over to the ACD and say, can you please route this for us? Find me an available agent with the right skill set um, who's currently um, capable of taking uh, a new interaction. The switch replies on which agent should have it, and then we pop that interaction to the agent's desktop. What that does is it gives us a few really good, cool benefits. Um, traditionally, uh, uh, the call centers are re reporting on average handle time, average um, time to answer, how long agents are on a call, how long they're on break, um, and all of that reporting is what call centers traditionally use to manage their workforce. Um, the switches dump all that data into a system called the workforce management system that does forecasting and allows them to staff their call centers intelligently. Um, 
without being able to put these channels into the ACD, now you have you should still get the information from service cloud, but it's in a different format, in a different system, and it doesn't work with their traditional workforce management um, applications for forecasting. So they're having to kind of manage on spreadsheets, and it gets difficult, and it just makes um, the telecom folks' life a little not easy. Um, so what we're doing here is by routing these through the ATD, by getting a single point of contact for all of that data, uh, it really makes the call center manager's life easier, um, and they don't have to switch to the call center technologies brand of email and chat just because it's the only way to manage their age. Here we're saying service cloud is obviously the best digital engagement engine. Let's use it, but let's also make the call center folks life easy um, and not lose the functionality that they normally do. Um, so again, service cloud, or excuse me, Harmony sits between service cloud and the ACB, bi-directional integration. So we tell the ACB everything about the Oracle ch uh, channel. And we take everything that the ACD tells us about um, what's going on in the telecom world, and we push that into service cloud. So you can also do reporting on all of these things handled time, wait time. You can do them all in service cloud as well. Any questions there? Uh, there was a, a lot of information and a lot of uh, not a lot of visual going on. Okay. This is Mark. Go ahead and, uh, a little clarity around. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Just a mm -hmm. little clarity around the reporting piece. So you said you can report off of basically all the interactions across all channels from the ACD or from within Service Cloud? Is that, or is it just from the Service Cloud side then you can report against all those interactions? No, no, actually it's, it, there's, it works all three ways. Um, so since we are logging in, managing our state, going ready, not ready, um, here on, both, on all three channels, that data is being pushed to the ACD. So all of their, like if you're in a buyout, they've got a reporting package called CMS, Genesis has, you know, interactive insights. All of those traditional reports now will also show the availability of the digital channels in Oracle. So you get all of the reporting on the ACD side. Um, on the service cloud side, um, we can also, I'll like to see what the chart here. Um, we're pumping all of that data back into service cloud as well. Uh, so the great thing is that now you don't have to, uh, the service cloud administrators get all of that data as well. Um, and this is just a flat table. You can do everything you want with it. Um, we actually uh, spent some time with the BI folks at Oracle World, and actually we've been talking to them for a few months now, and they've got some really pretty graphs that come up on this. You'll see these are phone calls, chats, emails. Um, all of the usage data goes into service cloud. And when I said you can do it all three ways, um, you also have this interaction ID, which is being written into both uh, the ACD call center reports as well as the service cloud reports. So you can actually do some um, higher level business intelligence uh, merging those two tables. Um, so again, it gets really powerful. You can see dispositions on incidents. You can you know tell how many calls of this type caused you know um, a longer uh, a longer handle time. But you really can do reporting from any of those places, uh, and you'll actually have a full uh, full view of the agents what the agents are doing. Does that make sense? Gotcha. Yeah, absolutely. That's very cool. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Uh, and I tell you, the call center folks really, um, this is a big boon to them. Because right now, they're having to manage all these things separately. And moving to Oracle Service Cloud as a desktop means that they have to give up that uh, vendor supplied uh, omni channel. Because the vendor only knows about their own channel. All right, so let's go ahead and just take a few calls and see what that looks like. Um, Mike talked uh, about the never repeat, never start over journey. Um, we want to get as much of the data we know about the interaction to the agent right away, so they don't have to. They, the <clears throat> excuse me, the customer doesn't have to repeat themselves. We've all been through this. You you go through the IVR, the interactive voice response. You know, it asks you a million questions. You have to put in your phone number. You have to put in your passcode. Uh, and then when you get to the agent, they say, "Hi, how can I help you?" And just absolutely no knowledge, and your heart sinks, and you start all over. Um, so we're going to try and fix that. Um, I'm going to put a call in right now, and I have no faith in the, the voice system, so I'm pushing zero every time. Uh, just get me to an agent. This phone call came in. Again, this is live. I called in through uh, our lab back in the office. Um, and all I got was the, uh, the caller's caller ID, so I know what phone number they're called from. This is called an Annie screen pop. Annie is the acronym for that phone number. 
And we gone into Service Cloud and we said, hey, at least we know the phone number. Can you go, uh, Service Cloud, go through and see if you've got a contact that matches this phone number. So we did a traditional screen talk. We found that Emma Jones was in the database as a contact, and her record had that, excuse me, phone number on it. So we pop up a screen right here and we say, all right, I think this is Emma. So can you please verify yourself? You know, let me, what's your address? And uh, Emma gives her address and I'm like, okay, great. That's awesome. So we'll go here and now we've kind of got some customer history and we're starting to get some of that value from service pop. But we still have to ask Emma what she wants to do. You know, um, I, I see you called in here, you've got a few service requests, but what would you like to do? Um, and Emma says, I'd like to place an order. So you click again. And this is all work for, or excuse me, workspace automation. Um, so you've got some workflows and some agent scripting going on. Um, but right now we've finally gotten to the screen where Emma Jones, this is a new incident, and she's taking an order, right? So we're going to buy a new product. But what if Emma did actually uh, put some data into the IBR? How can we use that data to really drive some savings on time for the agent and time for the customer? So if I'm going to hang up this phone call, and I'm going to call it again, only this time Emma's going to put a lot more information into the IVR as she travels through the voice menus. Um, she's going to let us know who she is and verify herself. Um, and she's also going to um, uh, answer a few questions to get her to the right agent. So I'm going to place that call in right now. Now this call we're going to have not just the phone number she's calling from, but some more data. And we're going to look at that data and make some decisions on what we're going to do with the workspace. So again, same workspace, but, and there's a button here you can show or not show to the agents. But basically, this is all of the data that came through from the interactive uh, voice search system. So she said she was calling about an order. She identified what product and category she was uh, calling about. The IVR did validate her by using a PIN number. All of this data that we gathered, we used to come over here and say, all right, we know it's Emma for a fact. We know that she wants to make a, a, order, uh, a new order. So basically, we're going to pop up this screen here. And when the agent answers, they can say, thank you for calling, Ms. Jones. I can see that you're trying to put an order in here. What can I get for you? And we've just saved 20, 30 seconds of call time. And again, that, uh, that call time savings is an incredible value and in ROI for customers. So just to give you an example of what you can do differently, I'm going to put in a different, a different call, and she's going to answer the questions in the IVR differently. Let's see what that looks like. So using workspace automation, using rules, we're going to take all the data we have available, and when this new call comes in, same workspace. However, we've got some pretty significant changes. Instead of saying quote, we say service request. Instead of having a quote tab active, we've got a service request tab active, and the quotes tab is actually gone. But again, this can be used for any different type of use case. We want to give the agent context about the customer visually. So perhaps if it's a brand a situation where your agent's answering calls from different kinds of brands based on the phone number that was called, maybe this blue bar changes red and the logo for the company changes. Um, really giving a lot of context to the agent without having them having to look at the, oh, let's see, um, this is subject new service request, so it's a service request. They know because we've got a big block of text here that says service request. Um, really want to get some context to your agents as quickly as possible um, using all the tools that Service Cloud provides. Any questions so far? We're going to get ready to talk about how we do this. Okay, great. Again, this is, these are the same workspaces, even though they look different, I'm just using uh, rules and uh, the data that we have about the customer to change what the workspace looks like. We'll close these guys out. And again, getting the call to the agent and getting the data from the, the voice system all happens here in this Harmony piece. But once Harmony has the call <clears throat> and passes it to the desktop, we want to use a different tool. This is the, uh, the second plugin. And it's called Oppo Studio. This is a Canvas-based design tool that the administrators will use to say, OK, as each new interaction comes in, what do I want to do with the data I'm getting? And what do I want to present to the agent? Um, so the service cloud administrator would have this tool. And then there's a small runtime that gets deployed to every agent through service cloud. 
that listens to new events and executes one of these workflows that's been assigned to their profile. So I'm going to go over. Actually, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, I'm going to go ahead and build a screen call for you guys. Give me one second here. We'll say new. I'm going to show you how easy this is to, to build out. So we'll say. Again, like Mike showed you, traditional screen pop is uh, it's still amazing to everyone that uses it. Um, but this is a, a long, lengthy process. So instead of having a design tool, what I would have to do is call a CTI developer that understands the APIs on the switch. We need a service cloud API um, developer. Those two guys work in concert or um, to publish out a, a screen pop that you code. And then you have to do a review process, make sure it works. Does it work? I don't know. We need a new um, phone number for the IVR. Test it. All of that's being replaced here by this design tool because the APIs are below this, already talking to the switch, and already talking to the service box. So we've got a bunch of activities that we can do. Um, in this case, we're just going to do a contact request. So as a call comes in, bring this over and say, service call, I'd like to check the database. And again, you see all of the uh, tables are here. I want to check the database for contact. And I want to see if the phone number they called from is in the database. So we'll say, does the phone's number to any of the phone number field match any? And if they do, we're going to get one of three different things. We'll get a single match, we we'll get no match at all, or we're going to have multiple matches. This is a case where um, a customer is calling in from their business and there's six people that have that office phone number. You'll see multiple matches. So what do we want to do in, a, in the case of a single match? If we see a single match, let's create an entity, right? Let's create a new service request. We'll say create a new incident. And since we already know something about it, again, we want to take all the identity and context that we have about that customer and, and <clears throat> uh, present that to the agent right away. So we're going to say primary contact ID equals. which is what we pulled back on this retrieve entity. This is the entity that we pulled back. Uh, if we have no match, we want to create an incident, right? So say create entity, say contact, and we're going to go ahead and set what we do know about the customer, which in this case is just uh, their entity. And then what do we do in the case of a multiple match? We're going to run a report in Service Cloud. And this report in ours is, and this is just uh, this is the database ID of that report, the multi-match report. And let's say, does do we have a match on Annie? And that's it. We're done. That's that's writing a complete contact um, uh, screen pop. This would have taken a week in the traditional manner if you're going to have coders doing it. So big savings in time. But instead of deploying this and testing it again, we're going to, we're going to go ahead and be able to test from within the service cloud. Any questions up to this point, I want to make sure that you guys are following with me. That's either a good thing or a bad thing. But I want to, oh, hang on, I think we've got a chat. Let me look. Regarding IVR gap. Okay, so I'm pretty sure the question is basically on a support from a support stance. How would how would this product get supported? Um, and traditionally, that's going to be through either the <coughs> to me the SI that they purchase it through or from us. Directly. That answer the question. Yeah, when they have a yeah when they have a telephony integration need, uh, like like Poplo obviously plays heavily in this voice space. If they're not getting the pops that they want. Based on whoever wrote the paper, um, we have a lot of clients that, even though we we'll work with a, a Helix or an Amberleaf or an Inventus, you name it, they might actually do the install, maybe even help build these configurations or some really complex stuff. Uh, when that comes in, um, if they do tier one or tier two support, if they've resold it on their people, they'll handle that. And the client knows that when we have our uh, kickoff meetings, they know exactly who to call for tier one, tier two, and then if the reseller has problems, they come to us. 
Now you've got some really large customers that just happen to like to be able to go directly to the uh, software manufacturer. So uh, they'll have us write it on our paper. We, we will have the contract, and they will go to us for all levels of support. We still typically share um, uh, revenue and uh, revenue with the uh, reseller, regardless of how they write it on their paper. But uh, the customer knows exactly who to call. Good question. Thanks, sir. <clears throat> All right. So, anybody else just uh, pipe up? I'm going to go ahead and kind of show how we test through this. So, instead of having to deploy it and test with real phone calls, we're actually going to use a, an a integrated test harness here. This uh, lets us provide all the data that we would normally get from the either the interactive voice response or um, and I didn't I didn't kind of talk about that but we, we do the same kind of screen posture chat and email as they come in all of the data that comes to the customer portal um, all of that's available uh, and actionable from within pop up so I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna we know my phone number here um, so we'll pass that data in and this runs in real time just as it was if it was coming in as a real call because the runtime doesn't know where the data is coming from. Uh, so if I come in with a, a known number, you see Emma Jones had that number. Excuse me. Um, so we would have it created a new incident and assigned the contact. Now, if we would come through on, say, a number that we don't know about, that came through. And this step-by-step -step is kind of a nice tool. It lets you visually walk through which ones you're doing. Um, this one it happens so fast that you don't really see that. But in this case, we've got a new, we've got, oh, it looks like a good thing we're testing. So the office didn't come through. So let me do that again. Make sure I didn't have it. Uh, one more time. Looks like actually I've got something going on in mine. But we create a new contact and then we fill out the information we have about the customer. So again, basic any screen pop, um, really simple. Uh, we're doing a lot of really cool things with uh, the SIs and our customers direct. Uh, I'd like to touch over some of the more advanced use cases um, just so you guys get a, a feel for it. Um, we've got several here that are, are listed out. Um, one that's really Kind of cool. We released it at Oracle uh, uh, Open World. It is the idea of a reverse lookup. So for customers that don't have a lot of data about their customers, um, just for whatever reason, uh, say they're a retail and they don't interact with customers on a regular basis, as they come in, the any that they get doesn't do them a lot of good because they don't know anything. They don't know. They don't have that data in service time today, but they want to. Um, so the first thing we do here is we'll do a reverse lookup. And this is a service provided by a company called Next Caller. And uh, they pay on a per interaction basis. And as they update the contacts, Next Caller actually pays them for that new data. But what we'll do here is we're going to come through and we're going to say, hey, I've got a new caller. Here's their caller ID, but I don't know anything about them. Give me what you know about them from the database. So I'm going to actually gonna place a call in the uh, code here. And we're going to actually run through this. Um, and we're going to get a call through. So we're going to call this uh, reverse lookup workspace. So I called in. Uh, I passed the uh, Annie to service call. And give a second. There we go. We've got a new contact created. And this data came from the caller ID. And basically, we went out to that third party system and said, I don't know anything about this person. Give me all the data you have on it. And next caller replied, Oh, this is Tammy Netrum. You know all of this information about her. So the address, uh, her email, and then some marketing data about her. Great thing here is you don't have agents having to request the uh, type in the address, phone number, the email address. It all comes through, and all they have to do is verify it. This uh, cuts down a lot on data integrity issues. On you know, I, maybe I type over the email, and I've lost the ability to talk to that customer. Um, it's really cool value. Um, we're seeing a lot of traction on that. Uh, any questions about how that works or reverse lookup in general? We kind of have some fun stuff going on there. Okay. Um, and basically how we did that is we used a REST API. 
Um, and we've said, hey, you know, let's try to clean the number up so it looks right for the uh, for the query. And then basically just go out and create a new contact and take the fields that we got and assign them to the service cloud uh, workspace. So kind of a bare bones example about that. <clears throat> Another thing we're doing, and we're hearing a lot, is Mike had mentioned it. Maybe the customer has an SFA system like Salesforce that they're doing for sales, but they've chosen Oracle for support. Um, maybe they have Siebel in the background where they've got a bunch of Siebel data and Siebel's not going away, but you really want to use Service Cloud as the agent engagement engine and use all the knowledge and the good things you get out of Service Cloud. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so how can we leverage the data that we get about the interaction, again, whether it's phone, email, chat, um, go out to a third-party system, grab that data from uh, the third-party system and um, populate a contact and serve up. I apologize if my course is a little off. So again, same kind of thing that we saw earlier. Uh, we're going to do a screen pop through sale, uh, Salesforce, show you what that looks like. Um, we will go ahead and put in, and I'm going to put in my phone number here. We're not going to go through the phone system. Uh, I know I've got a contact at Salesforce that matches this phone number. So I'm going to go ahead and do a screen pop here. It runs through the service cloud, or excuse me, through the uh, interaction workflow, and you'll see, hey, I've got contact details for Jarek Davis, his chief bottle washer, um, all of the information. This all came from Salesforce, and it came in real time. So I'll show you here, this is the Salesforce instance we're using. This contact, all of this information was pulled over. So again, as the uh, as the customers move from a you know a sales target to a service target, we can pull all that data in real time. Um, so here, actually, we'll give myself I'll give myself a promotion. We'll go from cheap bottle washer to cheap bottle dryer. They want to know that's more fun, and save that off. Come back over to the service cloud. We do the exact same. Do the exact same search, but in this case. Then Service Cloud has been updated. Excuse me, Salesforce has been updated. We're going to get a different answer back on that integration. You'll see here my title's changed to Chief Bottle Dryer. It's a great way to pull data from any of the legacy systems they're using, whether that's Siebel, whether that's Salesforce, any of the modern APIs. Uh, we support SQL, REST, SOAP, um, as well as some custom, just pure HTTP socket uh, for some of the really legacy systems. And for those systems, we can kind of work with USI on, on how those integrations work. But out of the box, modern integration tools to do integrations on a at time of interaction. So instead of taking a legacy database and dumping it into Service Cloud, let's go get that information on a per interaction basis. So we make sure that the in information that we're pulling across is good, accurate, um, and and is legacy data that we don't want to pull across. Any questions there? How that works. This is more of a kind of a general question, but just curious on um, how often you're doing product upgrades, and then when you do a product upgrade, how do customers get that upgrade and implement that upgrade? Is it something they need an SI to do for them, or is it something that they're able to just you know uninstall, reinstall, or how does that generally work? Sure. Yeah. So we um, we release on an Oracle uh, schedule, um, so to make it easy for the customers. Um, so we release with Oracle every uh, you know every quarter. From a how is it upgraded? Um, since we're just an add-in, uh, come over here, and if we look at the add-in manager, you'll see I've got some add-ins loaded. Uh, this is simply a matter of, and they can, the yes, SI can do it, they can do it themselves, we can come in and help them. It really just matters who's doing it. It's really as simple as you just do an update, and uh, there's a new zip file that they get updated. Uh, once that's done, they, they uh, save and close, and now they've got a new version. Uh, so it's a, it's a really kind of a painless process. Um, we've got a seven-year co-development agreement with Oracle. Um, so we're actually working with their product development team and the guys that are coding out the APIs. So we make sure that we release um, all the latest and greatest with Oracle. Um, since we only work with Oracle, that's something that's been really valuable um, because we've taken advantage of the new features right away. Just uh, like Mike said, we're going to be with Engagement Cloud. We'll be with the web UI as those things roll out. So, does that answer? Yeah, it does. It's perfect. Thank you. 
Awesome. Okay. Any other questions? We're uh, kind of coming up on the end of the hour here. I want to make sure that uh, you guys really understand kind of what value we're bringing and, and how how the products work. And I'll make a couple of comments from a from a sales or go to market that a lot that come up a lot. Um, so five nines is a is a good partner to Oracle, and they're actually a good partner of ours too. So five nines today is really the only hosted you know cloud based ACD that has a nice solution for Harmony, if you will. They've got a media bar, and they definitely play nice with Oracle in the marketplace in terms of Hey, you can use your Oracle channels as long as you choose five nines as the ACD, you know, as the voice provider, and maybe the workforce management. Some of those are core things that they do well. As long as you choose them as that provider, Harmony, uh, we, I would tell you, Open Methods would say, go ahead and use five nines media bar capability. You don't have to, the customer does not have to buy Harmony. That's a very difficult thing for me to tell you in public here, but and on a recording, but that that would be the case. What the five nines does not have pop flow. Nobody else has pop flow. I mean, when you think about pop flow in terms of how we've just sort of done for website, you know, done for CTI, what uh, you know, WordPress did for building websites is basically what what you think about it. And and the amount of we've got we've got visibility and, and the ability to control all of the uh, native as well as custom objects within Service Cloud. So you know, this isn't just screen pop. This is Popping to best answer, popping to best offer in a sales world, popping uh, auto starting a workflow, uh, an Oracle Service Cloud workflow, auto kicking off an Oracle script. So the power here is is really really cool in terms of automating business and CX outcomes. And so when we run into a five nine, if five nine is the ACD provider, uh, we'll come in and work with Popflow. Um, for the other 90 some odd percent of the of your addressable base out there, um, where Five Nines is not the ACD, uh, both of these products can be used either independently or together, uh, and the uh, the benefits just obviously compound when you use them together. Um, I think that's I think that's it from a go to market or what you might find in the in in the space. Again, if you if you have contact center or prospects with contact center at the core, uh, the Open Methods team. <clears throat> just, I mean, we grew up in that space specifically, um, so uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us with any any questions you might have uh, in the sales process. So we get on planes and do demos. We provide slides, you know, if, if it's part of your overall story, to make sure you you are getting the CTI component across early in the sales process. Uh, I think we all know Salesforce starts with a CTI. They show a, a call or an email or chat come in. And then drive some of the desktop. Typically, it's a screen pop. We can show a lot more of that, more than that together. We can, we can talk about 30 seconds versus seven seconds. Um, and so, there's some really cool stuff. And then, uh, and we can support obviously via WebEx and uh, remotely. However, you guys uh, like to engage. Um, one last thought that came up. We've been uh, when the contact center is core. Um, we've we've also installed our software in your instance. We're in the client's instance, and Jared could. Uh, could could help you with that. Um, so we've got a lot of Oracle Solutions consultants that actually work with us to uh, spin up, so they can actually use some some quite relevant data, I guess, as they uh, showcase what's possible. Especially when you have all of the interactions now being able to sort of automatically get full value out of uh, Oracle Service Cloud. So those are my uh, last thoughts. We've got about five minutes left. If there are any questions. Speak now, and if not, uh, we will send you the information uh, after this call, links, and uh, contact info, so you can uh, ask away. Just real quick on pricing, how do you guys price these these products? Is it a per user per month to match kind of their service cloud investment, or is it a kind of a one-time software fee? Yep, that's a great question. It's priced just like Oracle, so it is a per user per month. Uh, equation, typically a three-year deal. We co-terminate with Oracle Service Cloud because they're both add-ins. We're not real useful if Service Cloud ever went away. So we, uh, they've got 21 months remaining. Uh, you know, we'll co-terminate with that. Um, and our pricing is based on that. You know, just like Oracle. So we take sort of the average number of, you know, how many user months do they think they need over that span, 
and that gives them that drives the volume uh, in terms of pricing. Most products are priced uh, between fifteen dollars. So some of the largest organizations, right, with thousands of users per month, they pay about fifteen bucks per user per month uh, for each of the products. Uh, and then some of our other 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 clients on the smaller spectrum, the fifty seats, the twenty seats. Uh, they pay anywhere from twenty to thirty dollars per product per month is typically how that works out. Um, but they are products. They scale. They, you know, all the all the normal reasons why you would subscribe to product level uh, versus a series of one-off engagements in terms of scalability and stability. Uh, but it's a great question. And the ROI, we've got really good ROI calculators where um, we're able to um, show what uh, Oracle Plus. Either one of the open methods components can do to the to the outlook and the payback period. So um, most of those those clients on that partial logo slide, they actually introduce us um, to ensure that they can quite frankly get the payback on all interactions, which allows for the the economics to get nice on uh, the Oracle Service Cloud, or when voice hasn't been sold or used by a lot of the enterprise reps have been at least over the last few years to help them go win the voice seats and expand the deal. Great question. All right, I think we will close it there. Can't thank you guys enough. Um, great audience, thank you very much for spending the time with us. Again, we'll make some stuff available and uh, hit us up with any questions. And have a great day.